The next uh, speaker is uh, Rodolfo Dos Reis from uh, University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Perspective on surgery. So, good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank the scientific committee for inviting me for this talk, especially Dr. Eleni, very well known, who I met at the MD Anderson, and from whom I learned a lot. And I also congratulate Dr. Jolison and Dr. Romney for the outstanding organization of this event. So for me now, it's like time for, you know, surgery. How many surgeries we have here in the audience? Could you raise your hands? Wow. wow. I'm surprised. I'm quite <laughs> really surprised. How you feel about uh, what they are talking about? PDL1, PARP, and all these things. Are you feeling okay? You just raise your hand. So now I like it. This is my team. Very good. Very good. So we we'll talk about this. So unfortunately, I don't have any disclosure for this talk. But if you take a look on the landscape of advanced prostate cancer over the past three years, it changed a lot. Now we have uh, new drugs, new image methods, markers, guidelines, new standards, and. Uh, how can we fit surgery in this complex scenario? From my point of view, and I think that has been discussed before, we have three clinical scenarios that surgery can be fit. First one is the locally advanced anyone disease, the avoided, avoiding the side effects of this therapy. But what do we really know about this? What do we have learned for nodes that are not detected pre op well, The number of, of positive nodes is a prognostic factor, all we know that if we have more than two, it's correlated with early biochemical recurrence. The proportion of patients with durable disease-free control is low, it's just 10 to 20 percent, and you cannot avoid ADT most of the time because this control is low. More secondary interventions result in an increased number of, of hospitalization. This happens if the primary tumor is left intact. As a surgeon, we are always called us to see hematuria, retention, hydronephrosis, and if you leave the primary tumor intact, this is going to happen to you. So what do we know, which is the evidence now about if you find the nodes preoperatively? There are no prospective phase three trials with the clinic positive nodes and radical prostatectomy in extended PNLD. But there is evidence that the treatment of the primary tumor with radiation plus hormones can improve the outcomes. One thing that really I go into the, the clinicaltrials.gov to verify the trials. There is two trials only address radical prostatectomy in these scenarios. Maybe there are a lot of trials going on, but these are registered in this website. And one is from MD Anderson, they just put the results there. Both of them have adjuvant or new adjuvant therapy. Patients who had hormones plus dust cell and surgery, they have 35% recurrence free at one year. The second, we don't have the results yet. So what we change in the next two years for me? I think that we really need, uh, and for prostate cancer, when I think of prostate cancer, and I see a bunch of markers and everything here, and sometimes, one guy show and uh, there is a huge response using one drug. It's because uh, in prostate cancer, I think that there is space for everything. But we just need to find the right patient. It's for, for surgery, I believe that's the same. We need to improve our patient selection, uh, correlate with PSA doubling time, clinical features, molecular profile. One thing that I think is very important is define a new template for node dissection. That will be probably be applied to patients who localize the right risk disease too, and maybe lower the rates of recurrence. So in my opinion, radical prostatectomy, extended PLND may incorporate to the guidelines. If they provide a better local control, avoid mediate ADT in select patients, don't kill me, chances to improve progressive free survival and overall survival. Let's go to scenario two salvage lymph node dissection. What do we think about this? We think that salvage, salvage node dissection can cure or reduce the need for immediate systemic therapy. But what do we really know? We had our 14 series of cases reported. Adjuvant therapy was given 12 of them. The other two, a small number of patients. 
complete response rates range for 13 to 73 percent among series. The five-year biochemical progression survival ranged for 9 to 22 percent. The five-year overall survival was approximately 75 percent. No comparative or randomized control trial has been published compared salvage lymph node dissection versus radiotherapy plus hormones. In my opinion, current imaging modalities with coline or PSMA remain inaccurate to assess the extended location of all positive nodes. It's a feasible operation with few complications. We have a series of cases on robot, open, and laparoscopy. We don't know, unfortunately, the optimal template for salvage lymph node dissection, and this is a problem also for radiation because sometimes if you decided to do radiation, this, so you, you don't know the field yet. And patients with only pelvic involvement and favorable disease features, like PSA doubling time over 12 months, have a better prognosis. Again, if you go to clinicaltrials.gov, just one trial, I found, prospective on this clinical scenario. And this is very important. I, know, so I don't know if there, there are other trials going on, but this is registered from Vienna and the recruited patients. I think it's worth trying. <laughs> <That's your> try. <laughs> That's very welcome. And let's go to advanced prostate cancer again. What will change in the next two years? I think the image will play a key role in prostate cancer. I think that we are going to see a shift in how we treat and how we interpret this disease. You have molecular profiles. We need to define a template for recurrence. And I believe that salvage lymph node dissection may be incorporated to the guidelines, avoid systemic therapy in select patients, yet part of multimodal therapy in another select patients. Scenario number three has been exhausted, debated in the last section. We have radical prostatectomy for ME1 disease. What do we think that can control local symptoms? I believe that is completely true. Treatment of, the prim of primary tumor may be an important step in the management of de novo metastatic disease. This is what we think. But what do we really know? The bulk of the primary tumor in the set of metastatic disease is an established concept and the treatment of solid tumors. You can look to renal cancer, ovarian, so established concept. Preclinical evidence supports the biologic basis for cytoreduction in prostate cancer. Up to 7% of men who have a metastatic disease at the presentation will suffer complications from local invasion throughout the disease course. And this can be really worse now because we, we are prolonging survival with the new agents. So radical prostatectomy provides better control of local symptoms in anyone when we compare to radiation or no primary tumor treatment. The complications rate of this, of this surgery is similar to reported in a high-risk localized series if performed during early course of the disease. Unfortunately, there is no level 1 evidence to support that radical prostatectomy increased progression of survival or overall, overall survival. The vast majority of the evidence are from retrospective series of cases with high selection bias. There are seven trials ongoing, three with radiation, four with radical prostatectomy. The MD Anderson believe that I will report that they are early results on March 2018. And then we are going to have an idea about this approach with radical prostatectomy. For me, what will change in the next two years? We are going to be able to identify appropriate candidates, operate as soon as possible if you decided to operate it. They have better functional outcomes with this, better control of local symptoms, and this will be related with quality of life. Quality of life is a very important issue. Despite if you don't have a progression free survival or overall survival benefit, quality of life for surgeons, yeah, I think for patients, it's a very important talk. So why surgery will play an important role in the near future in advanced prostate cancer? It's still the best in stage method local and nodes, and provide tissue. Until now, no systemic therapy has proven to eradicate all tumor cells from the primary tumor, probably a continuous source of meds in advanced disease. Multimodal therapy, precise medicine, is clear the future. Rad radiation therapy is associated with more local side effects during the progression of the disease. Of course, we have technology, not only for CTC cells, not only for liquid biopsies, but you have a new tracers that can be, we can have intraoperative molecular image 
and see if you will have uh, cancer cells in nodes that you are not seeing. So, in my point of view, we are having to have 10 arms to work together, surgeons, <laughs> scientists, <laughs> medical oncologists, and patients. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>Every surgeon, and I'm a surgeon, will say, well, I know we have good results, but then at the same time, if you speak, for instance, to AMS, company who's making sphincter, they've never been as much flourishing. <laughs> so we, we, we have a problem. So how do you see, in, and, and I think for the patient, it's very important. They want to know that if you say you deliver effective surgery, you have to prove you do so. And at this point in time, we have very little data. So how do you see that field of quality insurance moving forward in the next two years? So I, I totally agree with you that uh, it's, uh, it's completely different in community and uh, in centers with you know, high volume surgeries. This is gonna happen, but this is we high teach people and uh, put them to practice. It's, it try to you know, reduce complications, raises incontinence in, in these things. Two comments. The first one is I don't believe that any of what you presented will be in the guidelines in two years. To be in guidelines must be evidence-based, meaning you must have results. In two years from now, you won't have results. You will have patients included in trials, that's it. The second thing, I really believe that it's a pity that the surgeons are so unable to run randomized controlled trial compared to radiotherapists. <laughs> it's a local treatment. We must have quality control. I fully agree with Bertrand. We must include patients in trial, and it's a pity that it's not done. I, I agree with you. I think that we are not uh, as organized as radiotherapists are. But I, I also believe that, uh, uh, that we, maybe we will be not on the line lines, and I say maybe on my slides, and I think that it's just have a recommendation. Because when it's not a recommendation, it, it doesn't mean that you say level F, dance uh, three, recommendation D. But we start to think about this. You know, this is, this is a very important thing and very important for surgeons and even for the treatment of this disease. So I think, and if you don't think about this now, you never we are gonna run the randomized trial. You see the clinical that I went to clinicaltrial.gov. When you have radiation therapy, you have more than 15 trials going on on this. And for surgery, just one. So we need to try to incorporate not a high level of recommendation, but to start to think about these trials. Yes, and I think really it starts, and that's very good, and Bertrand is gonna see that EOTC starts this quality assurance as well. So we are on the right ways. Thank you very much.